Greetings, everyone. David J. Kuhn with Qigong Awareness. We are going on to vlog number 44. All right. So welcome. Uh, maybe have some tea with me. Have a little bit of water. If you're going to have a sip of your water, be sure to uh, bless it. Say something nice over it. Because as we've discussed in the previous vlogs, water can be blessed. Water can be changed all the way down to its molecular structure. All right, let's get into it. For vlog number 44, I want to go into some further ideas about healing, about changing the outer world, the world that surrounds you, the people in your world, the places in your world, the things that you do, etc. Having some type of influence on that from the inside out. One of the things that I say to the people that I work with, whether that's when I teach seminars and workshops or when I'm coaching and counseling people privately, one of the things I've said over the years is that each one of us is like the sun in our own universe. You know how most people's egos think that everything revolves around us? That saying came about because the ego wants everything to be controlled in its world by its own self. So in other words, David's ego wants to control everything in David's world, the people, the situations, the places, wants to control everything, all right, and wants very particular outcomes from everybody. And so it's always working and manipulating behind the scenes through typically dysfunctional tactics, we'll say that simply, to try and coerce people or seduce people into doing what we want them to do. One of the ways that we do that without even realizing it, because if people realized it, most people would not do this thing that many people do. Many of us will actually get sick so that we don't have to go to school. We get sick so that we don't have to go to work. We get sick so that we uh, don't want to emphasize that word too much, but we, you know, we bring that sickness about because it brings us attention in some way, shape, or form. Okay. And there's a lot of ways in which it brings us attention. So that's kind of an egoic way of trying to control the world around you. Sickness is actually one of those methods that we unconsciously use to manipulate, coerce, seduce, uh, get attention, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That doesn't mean that every single body that's sick is manipulating and seducing and coercing other people. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying it's something worth looking into. If you're sick, maybe your ego is throwing a little bit of a temper tantrum trying to have its way. Or maybe perhaps you just got sick sick, whatever that looks like for you, broken limb, diseasement, whatever's going on in your life, maybe you're doing that and did that, so to speak, or brought that about because you needed rest, you needed a time out, you needed a break in your life. And if you don't think we do these kinds of things, then I highly recommend journal writing, I highly recommend meditation, I highly recommend Qigong practice, so you can slow everything down and you can start to see what it is that you yourself are up to so that maybe you can change it. So, those kinds of things nobody creates out of like conscious, deliberate attention and intention, right? We don't just go out and go, okay, well, I'm going to create this for myself. No, it usually comes about unconsciously. We don't even realize what we've been up to. But if you realize what you're up to, that's what awareness is. If you realize what you're up to, then you have the ability to change it, to change the direction of it, to change the course of it, etc. I want to talk to you a little bit about that today. Okay. First, I'd like to share with you, this is out of my book, Qigong for Beginners. Your Path to Greater Health and Vitality. You can find this on Amazon. Probably could have done a different title with this one. Um, I'm sure I could have. Uh, in fact, I probably could have done five different titles for this one. The reason that I chose Qigong for Beginners, although it can be somewhat misleading, 
because I'm not just going into the physical practices of Qigong here. So I know some people come to this book and they think, oh, I'm going to get the beginnings and the basics of Qigong. No, no, you're not. <laughs> You'll get some of that. You will, definitely. But you're going to get the bigger concept. For example, uh, this idea of gathering energy and the idea that whatever we do either builds our energy reservoirs or depletes our energy reservoirs. Now, that's true in Qigong. We know that of the lower Dantian, for example. If we charge the lower Dantian, uh, we can gather energy there, and then we can build that energy, and then we can use that energy for healing, transformation. We can use that for personal power. We can use that uh, not only to heal the body, but to also bring healing to our relationships, etc., etc. There's a lot of different things you can do there. We know that when the lower Dantian becomes depleted, that we uh, have low energy. Our Jing is weak, which means we have very little essence. Okay, And it, technically in Oriental medicine, in order to have Qi, which is related to metabolism and energy, and digestion from our food and things of that nature, as well as gathering chi from all around us, we have to have the essence first that's called Jing. Jing is built in the lower Dantian and it has to do with the kidneys, for example. That type of information is not some of it, it's a little bit of it in this book. A lot of that information is available in our certification program where there are basically like eight little books that I've written for each one of the eight courses in our certification program. For those of you that want to delve deeper into those ideas, those teachings, bring those teachings to yourself, bring those teachings to your clients, etc. In this book, okay, I'm talking about the general big concept of Qigong being the skilled uh, cultivation of universal life force and the idea of gathering energy and the idea that you can gather energy, which also means you have the ability to deplete your energy. Obviously, well, I think most of us anyway, would like to build our energy. And one of the things I talk about in chapter two, chapter one, chapter two, is this idea that if we don't have energy, our power is very weak. We don't have a lot of power. We don't have a lot of enthusiasm. We don't have, we just don't have the energy to get things done. So that's a big part of what I talk about there. Also in the book, I talk quite a bit about, which some people like, some people don't like. It's, you just have to find where you land there. But your energy, again, in general, is like a vessel of water. Okay, literally your body is made up of water. It, you have this vessel. And whatever you're sort of praying and thinking and speaking over that vessel of water, all the way down to your DNA, you're giving it instructions ongoing. It doesn't matter on the level that I mean this. It doesn't matter how it got set up. Well, my parents always talk that way, or I just have always talked that way, or I wouldn't talk that way if I didn't have this disease, but I do talk that way because I do have this disease. If that's you and you want to get better, you have to clean it all up. You have to clean it all up. You know, one of the things I did when I was uh, going through a spinal disease and the doctor saying I'd be crippled by the time I was 30 years old and, you know, had a lot of distress for obvious reasons and, and other reasons too, uh, is I literally would sit around and I'd, I'd realize I had these negative thoughts and feelings and so on. And, uh, like many people in the early years, it was like, man, I wish my parents weren't, you know, big drinkers and I wish they weren't big smokers and I wish they weren't big talkers about this negative thing or that negative thing. And I wanted to blame it on them, right? And I wanted to blame it on other people too, people I went to high school with, whatever the thing was, right? But as time goes on, I had to learn that they weren't with me anymore. Like I was literally on my own, had moved away some number 2,000 miles away, whatever, and I had to take responsibility for what was coming out of my mouth. I had to take responsibility for what I was thinking. I had to take responsibility for whether I was or was not working with my body and breathing and practicing and so on. And that is something I highly recommend, and it is a very, very big part of my teaching. 
this idea of mastering yourself. You know, somewhere on here it says uh, front cover. Okay, the front, front cover doesn't say it. But anyway, somewhere on here, maybe on the back cover, it says David J. Kuhn, medical Qigong master, right? And in some schools, I could be called a martial arts master. Some of my teachers have said, you are a master. So therefore, you're a master, okay? But mastery to me is like a broader idea. The broader idea of mastery should be obvious. Uh, you're better at something. You've been doing it for a long time, not exactly a certain number of years, um, probably more than three years, probably more than three weekends, uh, or whatever it is to, to become a master of something. Uh, I know we say Reiki master, and somebody might do that in three full weekends. But when we talk about mastery, of martial arts, for example. Um, for example, it took me approximately seven years to get my black belt in Taekwondo, for example, from this Grandmaster Kwan that I studied with. And there is a certain degree of mastery that is required all along the way to then become a master. But it's not like, okay, I'm a master, now I'm better than everybody else and all of that. It's just, you've reached a certain level of mastery, okay? And so in my teachings, I'll say it this way. So in my teachings, I'm very big on the idea of self-mastery. I'm not interested in being your master. You will see me sometimes and I'm in my uniform. I'm in one uniform or a different uniform, whatever the uniform might be. Or I'm dressed up nice and I have like suit clothes on. Uh, another time I'm dressed casual like this with my, uh, you know, my red shirts or whatever, whatever the case may be. Okay. Um, and some people will say, uh, you know, I can't, I can't quite figure you out because sometimes you're wearing this and sometimes you're wearing that. I, I don't understand where you're coming from. And so some people don't like that. You know, they really don't. Um, I'm not going to, I'm really going to try not to be judgmental in any way with this. Um, for me, it's not judgmental. I just want to point out something and you'll either like it, jive with it, or you won't. Uh, but certain cultures like the Chinese culture, for example, and the way that Qigong is taught and martial art is taught and so on, uh, for centuries, there's been this whole idea of my master is better than your master. You can watch this in any of the old Kung Fu movies. Um, my way is better than your way. And it's really a very egoic thing. And uh, Tai Chi, for example, um, you have one form, you have one way of doing it, uh, it's been done. No one has any idea how far it goes back. Some people say it went back this far. Some people say it goes back that far. Some people say it's exactly done like this. Other people say it's exactly done like that. And then everybody follows in line and everybody does the exact same thing. And that's very common. Um, it's also very common to be quiet, uh, meditative, you know, the meditative uh, stoic master or the meditative, very yin, very soft uh, master. But then you have the other style where they're very young, they're very hard, they yell, they make noises. And then these people over here who only do soft, look at the people who do hard and they say, oh, that's the wrong way. And the people who do hard, look at the people who do soft, say, oh, that's the wrong way. Here's the thing, maybe know something about the person who's sharing this with you and then maybe it's a benefit, maybe it's not a benefit. Huh. But I hope it is, okay. Bruce Lee came out and Bruce Lee basically did his own thing. He was married to a Caucasian woman. He started teaching the Kwai Lo. He started teaching Caucasian people. And the Asian masters basically came and said, look, you stop teaching them. Or basically, we may even kill you. So you need to stop teaching them. He taught them anyway. He didn't care. And um, he was like that. He was, you know, brave, courageous, whatever you want to call it. But what he was also brave and courageous about is he came in and said, you know what, enough of the dogma. I'm not going to wear the robes. I'm not going to wear things and do, do things exactly like you all do it. I'm going to look at what works and what does not work. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to use it for myself. I'm going to apply it to my own life and see if it makes my life better. Okay. So uh, for me, I have a psychology background, college level. I have a molecular cellular biology background, college level. I have an emergency medical technician training uh, background. I have, uh, you know, many years of uh, Taekwondo, um, Aikido, black belts in karate, two different ones, uh, 
Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do and Filipino martial arts, uh, Brazilian, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for many years, studied with many medical Qigong masters, Qigong masters, doctors of Oriental medicine, chiropractor who was also a doctor of Oriental medicine, gurus. So what's the point? The point is, it's about mastering yourself and realizing that you are at the epicenter of your life and there's an egoic way to try and control and manipulate your life it doesn't work very well and it may often lead you to sickness and unconscious ways of trying to get your way if that makes sense in the next vlog vlog number 45 if you're interested, I will teach you to go beyond simply creating unconsciously. And we talked a little bit here, and if you want to know more, I highly recommend reading the book, which again could have a different title, such as uh, Creating Your Own Personal Reality uh, Through Medical Qigong Practices or something like this. Anyway, uh, when we practice Qigong, when we practice being mindful of our breath, when we practice being mindful of this, not just any place, but this place called Lower Dantian, which we only know about because masters have gone before us who sat around like the Buddha did in front of a Bodhi tree and literally found this reservoir that lives deep within our energy bodies to then start talking about it. And here I am, however, much longer talking about the same thing and placing my emphasis and my mind and my focus there. What is my point? My point is you can focus on your hand and you can, I told you in one of the last vlogs, wherever my mind goes, my energy follows. That's important to know. If I focus on my hand, like I broke this hand in three places, okay? It was busted. My knuckles were all the way back down here. The doctor said, I'd never be able to lift my fingers like this again. They wanted to put pins in my hand. I'm not telling you you should do this, but I did not get the pins. I did not get the surgery. I healed my hand. The doctor said that in eight weeks, I would come back and my this whole part of my hand would be like this. I'd never be able to lift these fingers again. Okay, well, obviously, that's not the case. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying I got lucky and I also did some things. That made a difference and in three weeks actually it was about three and a half weeks i came back and i was able to do this he told me i was going to come back in eight weeks and i would be like that so uh i wasn't sure if i could do it or i couldn't do it but through practices of taking my mind's energy and placing it on my hand i then was able to do it and i was able to heal my hand so I'm nobody on the level that I am, okay? But I do have experiences in my life. And yeah, I'm a master, whatever. But I'm not like, again, it's not like I'm the be all and end all. I'm trying to help you guys become your own master if you want to be. And so the idea is, is that I can place energy on my hand. That's a very important thing. And so I'm giving you something with that. I can place energy on my outer reality of the people and the places and so on. We'll get into that more in the next uh, vlog. But we can also focus, for example, which I talk about in my book, on Lower Dantian. Well, Lower Dantian is not just like the hand. It is a deep energy reservoir. And if you know the secret that there is a reservoir there, and you can begin bringing energy to it, and you can begin breathing life into it, and you can begin to charge it, and use it to empower yourself and use it to build your chi and use it to heal yourself, well then, little by little, you're becoming even more masterful of yourself. And if you take all the time to go and do that, then you probably don't want to go out into the world and then use negative talk and cursing and speaking unconsciously, telling everybody about all the problems that you have. Those are the kinds of things that I also talk about in my book because each one of those things is going to deplete your energy system. So for the people who love this book, okay, and love the trainings that I do and the weekend intensives and programs and so on and so forth that I do, they get it. Because if you're going to do all that work practicing Qigong, again, if I come back to the idea of how most people teach Qigong, you know, 
maybe it's the, a monk and they teach the qigong and they teach the movements and they breathe and they hardly ever talk or say anything that's a cultural thing and i love that there are certain teachers that i love sitting with and being around and so on and so forth but there's also something to be said for opening up your mouth and speaking your truth and speaking your power figuring out what that is and not just following somebody else's way and not just being uh, a follower of some other master but learning to become your own master if you desire to be over your own words over your own breath over your own thoughts over your own emotions over your own lower dantian over what's going on in your heart over what's going on in your brain bringing coherence between the brain and the heart and uh, bringing some awareness into the lower Dantian. These are kinds of things that you can do in the future with some practice. And if you're able to do that, it, you make some pretty significant changes. I healed the spinal disease. I healed the hand. I have other stories, but we'll leave it at that for today. So if you're interested in hearing more about this, definitely tune into the next vlog because I'm going to take you to the next level with this. Let's chat about it some more if you're interested, if I haven't chased you off already. All right, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you in the next vlog.